The severity of a vulnerability can help prioritizing and understanding the urgency of a fix. If you scan your code or dependencies, you will often find tons of vulnerabilities. Do you need to fix them all? You might not be able to fix them all, and is that a problem? By measuring the severity, not only will we be able to prioritize the vulnerabilities that we should fix and possibly scrutinize some of them further, the way the severity is measured will also give some insight into the specific properties of the vulnerability. In this fifth part, we will look at how severity is measured and what we can learn from that. The industry standard for giving the severity of a vulnerability is the CVSS score. This is short for Common Vulnerability Scoring System. CVSS is maintained and updated by FIRST, the Forum of Incident Response and Security Teams, a US-based non-profit organization. Though there have been other attempts of defining and measuring severity, the CVSS is predominant. Though it has its limitations, no other method has even been close to challenge it as the industry standard. CVSS does not only give the severity, but the way the score is constructed also gives information on under which circumstances it can be exploited and what impact a successful exploit can have. Though this information is not detailed, it does allow us to distinguish vulnerabilities across a range of such properties. The different metrics that are used to compute the CVSS score are also constructed such that it should be repeatable. This means that if different people assess the same vulnerability, they should end up with the same severity score. This is more of a goal than a fact though, since the complex nature of vulnerabilities always leaves some room for interpretation. This will often result in somewhat different severity scores when we look at different sources. The score is a number between 0 and 10 with one decimal. This is sometimes translated into a more qualitative measurement giving it a none, low, medium, high, or critical severity. There are several versions of the CVSS score, and its latest installment is CVSS 3.1. It uses the same underlying metrics as CVSS 3.0, but some minor modifications on guidance and how to interpret some metrics are made. The description here will follow the metrics in CVSS 3.0 and 3.1. There are actually three different CVSS severity scores that can be attributed to a vulnerability. When speaking about the CVSS score, we actually refer to the base CVSS score. This is the one that we find in NVD and most other information sources. The base score only takes into consideration static properties that will not change over time. It will also not depend on the actual environment in which the vulnerable software is running, though it is possible to provide different base scores for different operating systems. It takes a set of base metrics and produces the base CVSS score. Another score is the temporal CVSS score. This score builds on the base score but adds metrics that will likely change over time, so-called temporal metrics. In general, the CVSS score assumes that the attacker has detailed knowledge of the targeted system and if a certain configuration is assumed for the vulnerability to be exploitable, the system will have that configuration, assuming it is a reasonable configuration. This brings us to the third score, which is called the environmental CVSS score. As the name suggests, the environmental CVSS score also takes into consideration how the vulnerability affects and is affected by the surrounding environment in which the software is executed. Here we take into account how, for example, specific configurations in a deployed environment will affect the vulnerability and the possibilities to exploit it. This score is an extension of both the base score and the temporal score. Next, we are going to look more closely at the different metrics that are used to compute the CVSS score. The base CVSS score consists of eight different metrics. We give an overview of the different metrics, but for a detailed interpretation of how to choose the different metric values, we refer to the specification document. The metrics can be divided into two groups, plus the scope. The first group are exploitability metrics. These metrics define how easy it is to exploit the vulnerability. If it is easy to exploit, then it is probably also more likely that it will be exploited, which should increase the severity overall. The first exploitability metric is the attack vector. This defines the requirements from where the attack can be mounted. 
a vulnerability that can be mounted over a network is regarded as more severe than one that requires physical access to the system. Between these two extremes, the exploit could be limited to attackers on the local or an adjacent network. The next metric is the attack complexity. This measures to which extent a successful attack relies on conditions outside the attacker's control. There could be some element of chance for it to succeed or bypass mitigation techniques. This metric can take the values low or high, and naturally, if the attack complexity is low, the severity is higher. Then we have a metric called privileges required. This describes what privileges an attacker must have before a successful attack can be mounted. If no privileges are required for the attack, then the severity is considered higher. This spans from no privileges required, low, which typically means normal use of privileges, to high, which can be seen as administrative privileges are required. The last metric in the exploitability group is user interaction. This specifies if a user must be involved and perform a certain action for the attack to succeed. Such actions could be, for example, clicking a link or executing a program. If no user interaction is required, the severity will be higher. The second metric group consists of impact metrics. The impact of a successful exploit is measured in confidentiality, integrity and availability, each of them having its own impact. The confidentiality will measure to which extent data is disclosed to an unauthorized attacker. The integrity will similarly measure to which extent an attack can modify or delete data. The availability metric refers to the denial of accessibility of information resources. All these three impact metrics can have the value none, low or high, depending on to which extent an attack would impact each of them. Sometimes an exploitation of a vulnerability can affect other components outside the security scope of the vulnerable component. The scope or the authority of a component is the part of the system that that component controls access to. One example is a virtual machine monitor which controls the guest operating system. The scope is then the access control mechanisms in the guest operating system. However, a vulnerability in the virtual machine monitor could lead to an attacker impacting the confidentiality, integrity or availability in the host operating system. In that case, the vulnerability affects another security scope. Such a vulnerability is seen as more severe than a vulnerability that only affects the component's own security scope. This property is given by the scope metric. All eight metrics are then combined using a mathematical expression, and depending on the combination of metrics and their severity, the computed base CVSS score will be a value between 0 and 10. As an example, this combination of metric values gives a base score of 6.5 on the 0 to 10 scale. The details on how to compute the score is given by the specification document. This was the base score. The temporal CVSS score adds three metrics for the vulnerability that affects the severeness, but are not assumed to be static over time. The first is exploit code maturity. Similar to the exploitability metrics in the base score, the more easily a vulnerability can be exploited, the more severe it is, and the availability of exploit code makes it more severe. The exploit code metric can range from unproven, meaning that there is no exploit code, for example if the vulnerability is just theoretic at the time being, to high, meaning that the code is reliable, widely available and easy to use. The remediation level is used to define the availability of a fix. This ranges from unavailable, which means that there is no solution to the vulnerability available, to official fix where the vendor has issued an official patch. Between these two values, there could be a workaround available, which is an unofficial, non-vendor solution, and a temporary fix, which is a vendor-released fix that can be used until an official fix is available. An unavailable remediation results in higher severeness. The final metric is the report confidence. This defines the degrees of confidence in the existence of the vulnerability and its technical description. The values of unknown, reasonable and confirmed, where unknown means that there seems to be a vulnerability, but it is not clear why and where it exists. 
a program could be made to crash, affecting availability, but the exact cause of the crash is not yet known. As more details become known, the value can change to reasonable. And finally, when all details regarding the vulnerability and its root cause are known, the value is confirmed. A higher validity and confidence in the report also results in a higher severity. For all three metrics, there is also a not defined value. This is used when there is not sufficient information in order to set one of the other values. If there is not enough information, the worst case is expected. So when computing the severity, it is equivalent to high exploit code maturity, unavailable remediation and confirmed report confidence. The not defined and then of course also the most severe values of the other temporary CVSS metrics do not alter the base score. This means that from a temporary metric point of view, the base score always assumes the worst cases. With less severity in the temporary metrics, the base score is modified to a lower score. It can never be higher than the base CVSS score, so the temporal CVSS score is always less than or equal to the base CVSS score. Again, the chosen values are fed into a mathematical expression to give the resulting score. In this example, we see that the report confidence is set to reasonable, and as a result, the score is lowered from the previous 6.5 to 6.3. The fact that exploit code maturity is high and the remediation level is set to unavailable does not affect the score since these worst cases are anyway assumed by the base CVSS score. The third CVSS score is the environmental CVSS score. This score can be used by an organization to put the vulnerability into the context of their specific operations, properties and circumstances. This score does not really add any new distinct metrics, but instead allows the organization to customize the information in the base score. There are two types of customization that can be done. First, all metrics in the base CVSS score can be modified, so we can override the levels for attack vector, attack complexity, privileges required, user interaction, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, and scope. For example, If it is known that the affected component is running with low privileges, this could be reflected by lowering the confidentiality impact from high to low. The base score does not take execution privileges into account and would just assume that the component is run with high privileges. That would not reflect the current environment and such a change, modifying confidentiality from high to low, would in that case give a CVSS score that is more representative for that specific organization. The modified base metric also have a not defined value, which will just use the value of the base metric. This is the default value if nothing is changed. The second type of customization that can be made is to add requirements for the impact metrics, that is confidentiality, integrity and availability requirements. This should reflect how important these metrics are for the vulnerable component in the user's environment. If the data handled by the component is to be considered public data anyway, there will probably be low requirements of confidentiality. Then an exploit that have high confidentiality impact would not affect the user or the organization to a large extent anyway. The base score does not take into consideration what type of data that is handled by the vulnerable component. The requirements can be set to low, medium, and high, and there is also a not defined alternative that can be chosen. The choice here will add a scaling factor to the impact base scores, or actually the modified base score for the corresponding impact if it has been modified. Not defined has the same effect as medium, that is, there is no scaling factor added, but the modified impact metric is just used as is when computing the environmental CVSS score. In this example, we modify the attack complexity to low. We might, for example, see that the attack works every time in our environment. Moreover, in our case, the data is very sensitive, so we set the confidentiality requirements to high. All other metrics and requirements are left unchanged from the base metric. The resulting environmental CVSS score is then 9.3, both due to the sensitivity of the data and the lowered attack complexity. 
It is clear that the CVSC score does not only provide a summary score for the severity of a vulnerability, but it also provides quite much information about the vulnerability. To help with the transparency, there is a defined vector string that summarizes the underlying metrics and the value for a given vulnerability and CVSC score. The vector string for the example that has been used here defines that CVSS 3.1 has been used for scoring the vulnerability with the base metric values of attack vector network, attack complexity high, privileges required none, user interaction none, scope unchanged, confidentiality high, integrity low, availability none, the temporal metrics was exploit code maturity high, remediation level unavailable, and report confidence reasonable. For the environmental metrics, we have confidentiality requirements high and modified attack complexity low. Often you only see the base metrics in the vector string, meaning that there are no metrics defined for the temporal and the environmental CVSS scores. Here is an example of how NVD shows the CVSS information. In this case, it is a vulnerability in Microsoft Exchange Server. It identifies the organization that has computed the CVSS score, in this case Microsoft, which is a CVE numbering authority. It provides the base score, which is 9.0, which in turn translates to the qualitative value critical and the vector representation is also provided to show all the individual base metrics that have been used. NVD does not provide temporal score, and since NVD does not have information about all users and organizations, they cannot provide an environmental score. If we instead go to Microsoft's own information regarding the same vulnerability, we can see that in addition to the base score, they also provide a temporary CVSS score, which is 9.8. They also show how the base score was computed, in this case in more textual form than the vector representation. And they also show how the temporal score was computed, giving us the information that the exploit code maturity is unproven, there is an official fix, and the report confidence is confirmed. The reason for the lower temporal score is both due to the fact that there is no proven existence of an exploit, and there is already an official fix. This lowers the severity of the vulnerability, at least from the CVSS score perspective. As we have seen, the CVSS score does not only give the vulnerability severity, but by looking at the score we can also understand how easy it can be exploited and also its impact if it is exploited. In order to know if our particular software or application is vulnerable, we need to have a way to map the vulnerability to a specific software, application or hardware and also to identify the version numbers that are vulnerable. In the next part we will look at two different ways of identifying a piece of software or an application in order to help us with such a mapping. These are the CPE and the PURL schemes.